Hey guys, today we're going to make the backside of the first page that we made in the last video for the uh, Mini Everlasting Printable mini album templates. Um, these will be listed, uh, listed, this will be linked um, in the description box below this video, along with any and all the products that I can find. Um, will also be linked in the description box below. But this was the first page. It has a flip out pocket page um, with its insert and there's a little pocket there. Super cute little pocket there. I mean, it's just absolutely adorable. Um, I'm just so loving the way this is looking. So in this video, we're gonna do the back side of this page. So it'll be attached to here. Um, and this video was really long when I filmed this part, but the back side is going to be a little bit simpler, not as long, but it's still going to be just as beautiful. So we are going to do the back side in this video. I did want to mention that there is a secret coupon code in this video. Um, it will pop up somewhere in this video for a couple minutes. Um, it's hard to find. And if you find it, it's good for 50% off everything in my shop, which will also be listed below. Um, but it's only good for the day this video goes public. So from midnight to midnight on the day this video goes public, that coupon co uh, code will be good. If you are not sure if you found the coupon code, the right coupon code, you can always send me a message through Etsy and ask. Um, you know, those messages are timestamped. So if you ask me, you know, at 10 o'clock at night, uh, it's Eastern Standard Time, by the way, that is my time. So if even if it's, you know, still that day in your time zone, but if it goes by my time zone. So you need to keep that in mind. So you maybe want to Google time conversion or whatever <laughs> to, to find that out. But um, if, if you do contact me through Etsy with the correct code and I'm already in bed or sleeping or I've been gone all day or whatever, I will still honor that because it does tell me what time you contacted me. So... Um, don't be afraid to do that. You know, you can always send me a message and say, hey, is this the code? And don't freak out and don't panic because if it is the code, then um, I will de definitely honor it um, the next day as long as you contact me in that 24-hour time period, okay? So again, this coupon is um, for 50% 50 50 off everything in my shop if you find it. So if you do find it, please don't share it. Don't put it anywhere out there. Don't put it in the comments. Don't put it on Facebook. Don't do any of that business. Um, if, if I see it out there, I'm going to have to deactivate the whole code, and that's just going to be stinky for everybody. So um, it's just kind of a fair warning. If somebody shares it, then I will have to deactivate it and... Um, I don't want to do that. So again, it's hard to find. It's up for a couple minutes. Um, and it's only for the first day this video goes public from, from midnight to midnight, a 24 hour time period, my time, Eastern standard time. I am in Louisville, Kentucky. If that helps you, um, get your, you know, time conversion, right? So let's start, um, with the second page or the backside of the first page, not the second page, the backside, the backside of the first page. So this is the first page. We're going to do the back side. So what you're going to need is page number three, which is the second part of the main base, main base option A. So I printed this off in, in the Harley script. Isn't that beautiful? Because it matches the paper collection that we are using very well. I made it just for this paper collection. I just combined two of my background designs and it just was beautiful. So you're going to need page number three, one of those, and then you're also going to need page number 18. Oh, sorry about the glare. I'm just trying to show you the page number. Page number 18, which is the mat for the main base page uh, two and three. And I, I actually printed this on transparency um, because we're going to make a cool little window, okay? So those are the only two pages you're going to need, and you're only going to need one of the transparencies. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to trim these out. I got my Fiskars Rotary Precision Paper Trimmer out here. And I'm just going to go ahead and trim out all the way around um, this piece. And then I'm going to trim out the transparency as well. People ask me all the time, how do you line this up? Let me see if I can scoot in. I'll show you. Okay, so what I do, can you see the top and the bottom? Well, just barely. So what I do is I line up the blade. There's a blade right here, but it does not match up with the plastic arm that's on here. So I line the blade 
I lined the, the uh, I'm sorry, the line, like this line right here, can you see that? This line right there, and this line right there, I line it up with the blade um, on top and bottom. And once you do that enough, you'll be able to gauge how much distance between this plastic, um, uh, what is this called? Hand, what is this called? This plastic um, God thing. I'm not sure what that's called, but anyway, you'll be able to gauge between how much distance you need to do all the time. So you won't have to do as much lining up with the blade. You'll be able to gauge it a little bit easier. So uh, I get asked that all the time, so I thought I would share. Um, okay, so you also need to keep your big scraps too. Don't forget, you don't want to throw those away. All right, so I'm going to finish trimming this out. Just like that. No time at all. And then I'm going to trim one of these out. I just need one. So same thing. You can actually see through the, you know, the transparency on this one so you, you don't have to guess as much. But I'm going to set this aside in the pile of things I can use later. And then I'm going to go finish trimming this out. I'm going to keep this scrap too because you never know when little things like this might come in handy when you're making a, a mini album. Okay, let me finish trimming this out. You could use your scissors if you don't have a paper trimmer. Um, I do that quite often, but when I've got a lot of square things, square-ish things I need to trim, I definitely like to use my paper trimmer. Okay, so let me put this up. Okay, so then the next thing I want to do, I don't need this right this second, so I'm going to set this aside. Can you see the Harley script on there? I don't know if I pointed that out a minute ago. Sorry about the glare. <laughs> Let me put something underneath it. Oh, here's the paper we're going to be using in this. Can you see it? It looks so pretty. Okay, so then we need to, I'm going to go ahead and ink this paper up right here. And I don't know if I need my little mat there, but this is Distress. Oh, uh, the camera, the camera's a little closer to me now and I'm having a hard time adjusting. Um, this is the Distress Oxide Vintage Photo. Um, it's, it's nice because it has a little bit of a, a different, um, what am I trying to say? Finished look to it than the original Vintage Photo. And if you get it wet, it gets kind of chalky. So... So I'm gonna, first I'm going to go through and just directly from, oh, shoot, first thing I want to do is I want to go directly from the ink pad to the paper, direct, direct to paper. I don't know what else to call that. And then I'm going to take my blending tool here and I'm just going to just soften those edges a little bit. And I think I will... I think I will hit it with a little bit of water. Oops, that's not water. This is just water, so I'm gonna hit it just with a little bit of water because it does do a pretty cool effect. And then I'm gonna dry it. This is a Ranger heat tool. I'm gonna dry this real quick. Okay, I've got it mostly dry. I mean, I don't know. It's hard for me to tell in the viewfinder if you can really see the detail of just getting that wet just a little bit does. It's really cool. It's a really cool effect. But we're not going to be matting this completely. So I think it's a nice little added touch um, to the base page. Okay. So then the next thing I want to do is I want to use one of those dies. Let me grab it. I'm going to be using this die. This is a Regal Frame, and this is from LDRS. Let me remind you. This is the paper collection that we're using for this, Time for Tea. And this is one of the dies that we're going to be using, also from LDRS. They're both from LDRS. And there is a coupon code, Genevieve20, 20% 20 off. Um, I will link her shop below. So if you go to her shop, don't forget to use that coupon code. So we're going to use this die. We're going to create a... Um, a window okay so let me show you what I mean we're gonna need this one here and this one so I'm gonna go ahead and take them both off again regal frames available at LDRS so I'm gonna need my Sizzix Big Shot and this is the paper that I've picked for this page for the back side of the first page isn't it pretty 
so soft. I just love, love, love this collection. Okay, so I'm just gonna stick this on here. This is a six by six, obviously, um, paper. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, um, I think I'm just going to scoot it over to the edge as far as I can. This is not a magnetic platform, it's just a regular platform. And I'm gonna roll it through. Let me scoot it this way so I don't bump into anything until it pops. Right? Did you hear it pop? Then I'm going to roll it back through. Whoop. <laughs> okay. So it should have cut it absolutely beautifully. And it did. All those little, I call it little confetti. <laughs> Let me get it off of there real quick. All right, let me set this aside for a second, but we're going to need it again here in a minute, so I'm not going to go too far. Well, that really wasn't aside, but hey. Okay, so let me release this from the back there. And then I'm just going to gently rub it to get all of that, all of the little things poked. So pretty. Such a beautiful pattern. All right, so now I'm gonna take just something pokey and I'm just going to see if there's any little bits left. There's just a few. And that's it. Look at how beautiful that is. So pretty. Look what it looks like when it's just white. Just in comparison, just so you have the um, difference. Isn't that pretty? I just love this dye. All right, so let me, let me get these pieces picked up here. I'm going to put this in my scraps. Because I'm sure I can use it for something. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to ink my edges. Um, I think I'll do the same thing. I'm going to go like this. All right? With my... And then I'm going to... Maybe not so much like that. Then I'm going to go like this and spread that ink out just a little bit. All right, easy, easy. I'm not being real careful. I'm kind of really sloppy, actually. So don't feel like you have to be super careful, especially when you're doing like a shabby, shabby chic album. Okay, so what we're going to do is, um, where's my, let me find it. We are going to use some cheesecloth. This is unbleached cheesecloth. Pretty cool. And this is, you know, these are this is one of those things that you don't think about using, but when you see someone else using it, you're like, oh my gosh, that is so cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lay it on here. I'm going to guess, guesstimate. Do you all do that? Do you guys guesstimate too? Because I guesstimate a lot. And this is one of those things that I was inspired by um, a few book artists that have featured um, on my YouTube channel. I don't know if you've seen them yet. You might not have seen them yet. Um, but I'm doing a new feature where it's like a spotlight on people that I think deserve um, extra attention. So if you want to check that out, feel free. I will link that below if you'd like. But, you know, using like different media, which is what this kind of is. It's like a different thing. It's like mixed media. Um, two layers might be too much. So let's just go with one layer like that, right? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to do, I'm not going to glue it down or anything, not yet. But what I am going to do is I'm going to glue this down onto that. So this is Art Glitter Glue. May May sent this to me. Thank you so much, May May. This is pretty cool stuff. Um, I will link her website below she was so awesome to send this to me so all i'm going to do is i'm going to take this and i'm going to just literally go around the edge around that edge before all of the fancy um die parts so i'm just going to go around this edge sparingly and there's a reason for this so just hold tight go around that edge right then I think this does have an up and down because it has little hearts on it. 
So then I'm going to find the center, sort of, of my page, right? That's not too bad. All right. So let's just push that down real quick. So I'm just going to roughly cut this off. I'm not trying to be precise just yet. And I put this in my pile. This stuff is so cool. It's such a neat uh, texture to a mini album. It's amazing. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my big shot back over. And I'm going to stick this whole piece in here. Oh, you know what? I didn't even check to make sure my thing was upright. Oh, well, you can't really even, you can, it is upright, but you can't really see much of the, much of the wording until I trim it back more. But anyway, all right, so I'm going to stick this in here and then I'm going to take this die from the Regal die set. This is the center die and I'm going to position it right here and it's going to cut through all those layers. I'm going to try to make sure it's center there. Oh, I've got the wrong plate on the bottom. I like to keep the one that's all messed up on the bottom. All right, let's try this again. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to center this right in the middle there. Well, maybe. Okay, and I'm going to gently put this top plate on there. Okay. Now let's run it through. I'm gonna run it through till it pops. Oh, it didn't really pop. Well, that's okay. I'm gonna run it back through. And I'm gonna run it back through one more time just to be sure. I don't think it needs it, but I just wanna make sure that I'm getting it cut. Okay. So now we, it should have cut through all three and it did. Check that out. There's the green. There's the cheesecloth. And then there's the actual main base page right there. So, isn't that cool? So now look, now we have this. Now we have a window. It went through all three layers. That's how awesome these dies are, by the way. Just pointing that out. Look at that, that is so awesome. Okay, now I'm gonna move this. Okay, so. All three of these pieces can be used on a different page, so don't throw these away. And this is also why I just barely got the glue around the edge, okay? That was important um, so that we could keep these pieces for other pages. We don't want to waste, so I'm going to also put these in my pile over here. All right, so then I want to, real quick, I just want to, like, do this edge with some ink. Isn't this pretty? It's so cool. I love this color, this blue-green color. I just think it's beautiful. So now I am gonna go and trim just a little bit better around here. I guess I could have flipped it over and done it. But I want it to be very like organic and, um, you know, just loosey-goosey looking like a shabby chic would be, you know? Okay, and you can pull and tug and, you know, make it look a little bit shabbier. Like, I don't like that sticking up like that. Anyways, so you kind of get the point. All right, so the next thing I want to do is I'm going to add some lace on one side. Um, ah, I can't decide if I want to use a vintage lace trim or if I want to use a purchased trim. Uh, let me use this one. I think I'll use this one. This one is decorative trim ivory. Oh, well, I'll be damned. Right? So I think I got this at Hobby Lobby. Not 100% sure, but um, you're only going to see about three of them-ish. So I'm going to cut it right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it underneath there like that and have it peeking out the side. Do you see what I'm saying? So I'm just going to go ahead and flip this over and I'm going to use Fabri-Tac this time. This is Fabri-Tac uh, Beacon 
my favorite glue. This really is my favorite glue. I mean, I'm not going to lie. This is my absolute favorite. But I have to tell you, it is expensive, right? This is an expensive glue. I wanted to point out really quick that the side pocket inserts are on page, whoops, page six and page seven. But we're not going to do those yet. I'm going to do one video devoted to just those. Um, so you can see, you know, they'll all kind of be the same. But we'll do like a, you know, crazy, shabby, um, chic look to all the side pocket inserts. So we're not, we're going to do that in a separate video. But just know that there'll be one here. Where this you get a lot more for your buck. But it doesn't work for everything. And nor does this. This doesn't work for everything. So they each have their purpose. If that makes sense. Okay. So I'm just, actually, I think I'm just going to. You know what I'll do? I'll run, a, I'll run a strip of glue along this edge here, just to be sure. Okay. And so what I'm going to do, let me make sure I've got it going the correct, I want it on this side. Put it on that side, Jen. Okay. So I'm just going to lay it in here and see what it looks like. Okay, so that's what it looks like on one side. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so then the next thing I want to do, wipe my glue off there. I'm going to be attaching this to the back side of it. So, just make sure I got it the right way. I'm going to run, I'm actually going to use some score tape because I want it to stay. I want it to stay stuck. If I can find the end. So I am going to run all four, around all four edges. This is Sue Queen score tape. You could use uh, glossy accents if you wanted to. Um, I didn't want to use a wet glue because uh, for the edges because I'm going to go ahead and attach it to the back side of the um, first page there. So I just wanted to use something that would grab quick and we could keep moving. That's not too bad. Not so bad. Oops. No nope, wrong one. And I'm going to take the backing off. Okay. But I am going to run some glue around the um, opening just a little bit, just so we it doesn't you know pull apart too much. And since my fabric tag's sitting here, I'm just going to use it. I can get my lid off. So I'm just going to go around. Maybe over the lace a little bit. Okay. So do you guys do that? Do you guys have a certain glue for certain things? Because I know I sure do. I have a glue for everything. All right, so I'm going to make sure I've got this on right and straight. And I'm just going to like, of course, you don't need this whole mat for the inside of this. But since I have that lace and stuff, I thought, why not? Why not go ahead and add it, the whole thing? And so this is a Teflon bone folder. Get that around that edge there. And this just is really burnishing it down so it doesn't come unstuck. So hopefully I did that right. I did. Okay, so that's what we got so far. Isn't that pretty? All right, so now we're going to attach it to this. We've already got the tape on the back side of this. So let's just keep our fingers crossed that we don't mess anything up. Which, you know, I'm pretty good at doing. I'm good at messing things up. <laughs> I'm good at making boo-boos. I am going to use a little bit of glue stick just to give me uh, some wiggle room since we've got both pages finished. This is nothing special. It's just a Hobby Lobby brand cheapy glue stick. Okay, so I'm going to hold it like this. And so here we go. Here we go. Let's attach this down. So I think I'm going to match up the top. And hopefully I got it on there straight enough. Okay, I'm going to flip this up. 
take this tape off. A little bit of glue stick. And then, which one did I match it up with? That one, let's match it up. Again, or did I? No, I didn't match it up. Match it up again with this side. Come on, paper. Yeah, see, this is what happens when you um, trim funky, but that's okay. Not a big deal. So let me open this up. Because I trim funky all the time. Let's see, did I get it on there good? So then this is the side pocket, and this is the spine, right? So then it'll flip like this, and then you'll have that on the back side. Isn't that beautiful? I just think it's awesome. I am going to ink these edges up real quick. Whoop. <laughs> just a little bit, just so it doesn't look, oh, and look, that one's really white. Could have maybe, ooh, did you see that come apart? No, 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 no. Okay. We don't want it coming apart. Ooh, I, did I, I don't know if I pointed this out to you guys, but when I made my prototype and I used, um, oh, what, what did I use? I used a, like a different brand of double-sided tape. My, my spine came out, so it came off of the book, so. Um, I would suggest you use the Suquain. The Suquain is the best that I've come across, but um, if you find something that works good for you, use it. But I just wanted to let you know that it, sometimes it does matter. You know, it depends on what you're doing. But when you're constructing a book, it's probably a good idea to use the best you possibly can. So there's that page. I'm not going to do any embellishing or anything else to this page because I just love it. I think it is absolutely beautiful, right? What do you think? Okay, so that's all we got for this video um, this time, right? Easy, easy. So now we got one complete page. We've got the front and we've got the back. And then the next video, we'll do um, another page. So I totally love it. I'm totally digging it. I think it's fantastic. Okay, so <laughs> if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, go ahead and hit this circle right there. Please let me know what you think um, about this video and give me a thumbs up. And you may want to check out these other videos that are on the screen. And I will see you next time.